Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while that I have been trying different AI tools from generating ideas to creating designs and building a working app. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how has AI changed my day-to-day -day workflow as a UX designer. Before I jump in, I share everything about design and tag on my YouTube channel. If you're interested on this type of content, please feel free to hit the subscribe so you won't miss any of my future content. There are still a lot of discussions going on, like how this professions might evolve in the next few years. So I don't have a clear answer yet. However, as I'm testing different AI tools, the emerging technologies and put it into practice of how I work, how I solve problems, my biggest takeaway is I think the line between design, eng, and PM are getting more blurry. And before AI, a lot of my day was tactical, from research synthesis to making flows, mocks, prototypes, generate different variations of ideas, you know the drill. Now, since AI can handle a lot of those heavy lifting work, that shift really freaked me up to be able to focus more on the clarity of the problem, setting the strategy, aligning with my cross-functional partners, and making better, faster decisions as a design lead. So let me show you how AI fits into the different stage of my design flow, and hopefully that could help you to unlock your efficiency, enable you to spend more time on the creative work that you enjoy doing. I will be sharing some of the top tools that I think are really helpful in my day-to-day -day work, but you know, this AI landscape has been evolving so fast, the tools we're using today might be out of date tomorrow and my recommendation is give it a try test it out at the same time you keep an open mind don't let the countless new tools overwhelm you instead focus on your purpose i think that can help you maintain the clarity so you can best leverage those tools to unlock your own potentials First of all, I think AI has definitely accelerated how I understand the problem space. From running competitive analysis to synthesize the research insight, there are so many tools that can help you generate the key insights that used to take days or weeks, where now it might take just a few hours. Uh, the tool that I use most often these days are probably Gemini. It's just so much you can do here, from generating ideas, brainstorming, to creating image, video, or even build a product. So let me show you first how you can leverage it in discovery and the research phase. Say that I am building a fitness app and I am collecting competitive data to understand the landscape. Uh, you can just drop competitor URLs here and it will summarize the strengths, weakness, and positioning in seconds. So let me show you an example. So say that I want to build a fitness app that helps users track daily exercise, nutrition, and achieve their fitness goals with AI Assistant. Uh, I would love some help to understand what are the top competitors and summarize their strengths, weakness, and positioning. So I hit submit. As you see, with just a few seconds, it started pulling together the summary of some top competitors in the fitness app market. And it has this detailed summary that touch on their primary focus, their strengths, weakness, and also the positioning. It even generates some key takeaways uh, and recommendations for my fitness app, what might be potential competitive edge and unique opportunities. So from here, if you want to focus on any specific area and dig deeper, you can just continue to chat and explore more. Okay, so here's another tool, Notebook LM, which is a really helpful research and thinking partner that can help you synthesize insights. You can upload your sources, whether it's a PDF, website, even YouTube videos. And from there, the Notebook LM will summarize them and make interesting connections between the topic and create querible findings. It provides you instant insights. You can see not just the answer, but also the source and even turns the insights into a podcast so you can listen and learn on the go. Let me show you an example of how I use it. I just created this new notebook. As you see from here, you have many options how you want to provide the sources. If there's any existing research, you can just drop it here, or you can provide a link to a website, video, or copy and paste the text here. In this case, I'm just gonna share with you how to search the web for new sources and start from there. So I just put my question, how can AI help people achieve fitness goals? And submit, there we go. The fast research has completed. Uh, if you're ready to move forward, you can just click on import 
and there we go. It has generated this notebook, AI personalization and the future of wellness with a summary of all the sources. And from here, you can start typing your question and get queryable result insights from the resources it just gathered. Let me try a question. What are the top challenges? Well, there we go. It has quickly generated critical challenges associated with the modern wellness trends, the AI implementation and fitness that categorized into ethical governance issue, tactical data, accuracy concerns, and limitation related to user adoption and engagement. It has the detailed breakdown per category with the source that linked to each of the findings. On the right side, you will see all the different options that, for example, you can generate an AI podcast, an audio overview. You can create a video overview, mind map, reports, flashcards, quiz, and even infographic and slide deck from this notebook. So it is a really powerful tool. I think that can help you quickly synthesize the insights, especially if you're working in a case that there are a lot of contacts, background, you know, instead of spending days meeting with different people, different team who work on relevant projects or reading through the docs and research report, you can just feed Notebook LM with all the resources that you gathered that can help you generate quick insights and synthesize of the top questions you're trying to answer. Moving on to ideation. So when it comes to brainstorming, generate ideas of how to solve the problem, I use FigJam a lot. So FigJam is a product. It's kind of like a whiteboard. You can easily collaborate with others to define the idea, brainstorm, align on decisions. Let me show you how I use it. So I'm going to tap on try for free. Okay, so once you open the fake jam board, you will see this card on the right of make templates and diagrams. And this is the AI powered features that I love where you can just enter your prompt and start generating flow charts, mind map, brainstorm ideas, um, provide Gantt chart and develop plans for workshop and more. I think there are so many powerful features here. So definitely encourage you to test it out. So here say that I need some help to brainstorm ideas. I'm going to tap on brainstorm. I want to build a fitness app that helps users track daily exercise, nutrition, and achieve fitness goals with AI assistant. Help me generate some ideas. Make. There we go. It has generated this brainstorm or fitness app with AI assistant with the templates starting from agenda, uh, who's here, what are the meeting goals, and some sticky notes for the discussion topics as a group, and followed by the brainstorming card that we can use to organize this brainstorming with the team to collect feature ideas, expand on the ideas, and expand on the challenge and potential solutions. And last, there is also a board here focused on the next step. How do we turn some of those ideas into action items and move forward? You can take it from here and organize a brainstorming session easily with your team and cross-functional partners to really dive into the space. So from here, if you want to try something else, you can tap on this button and you will see all the different options from like brainstorm to run a meeting or creating a diagram that you can easily start and with some prompt and use a template to start from there. Before AI to organize a workshop or brainstorming session, it takes a lot of work to set up the goal, to prepare the materials, scheduling, and plan the activities. With AI, it just becomes so much easier. You can easily create a brainstorming session for the product ideas or start creating flowchart user journey just by talking to the AI assistant. The next stage, design and visual explorations. This is probably the most revolutionary area that I see throughout the whole design phase of how AI can accelerate the typical work process. Because in the past, you know, once we have some initial ideas, this is probably one of the most time consuming part where we spend a lot of time in moving pixels in creating those UI mocks. There are many different AI tools that can help you here. Let me show you some example of how you can quickly create some concept mocks with Figma Make. So here is the main interface of Figma Make. This is basically the prompt area that you can just enter what you want to make, give some ideas and start creating from there. Also, you can explore what others have been building with Figma Make to get some inspiration. 
So let me show you some example. Uh, I just entered my prompt. I want to create an AI fitness mobile app that help users track and achieve their fitness goals. And I'm gonna click send. Okay, as you see, it opened a Figma file and started generating reasonings and building up the idea. You know, for someone like me who does not have a coding background, I have to say it is pretty mind blowing to me that to see the progress it's making and generating live code so quickly. You know, on this topic, there are also other videos that I have done in the past sharing a detailed walkthrough of how you can build a working app from scratch. So if you're interested, feel free to check it out. Okay, there we go. This is the dashboard of the My AI Fitness Tracker app. You will see the welcome screen and some top data shows where I am in achieving my fitness goals. I love the section of AI Coach Insight. It also has today's workout that I can just jump in and start my workout. It has the bottom nav bar from home to workout. There is also a tab for goals where I can view where I am in achieving my goals uh, in different categories, for example, weight loss or monthly workout. And last, there is also a tab for progress that shows data realization of how am I doing in achieving my different fitness goals. We just created this working app in a few seconds. You know, you can select the different devices to look at a preview on mobile of how this app will appear. You can demonstrate this concept very easily and walk through different functionalities, user journeys with this clickable prototype. You can switch this to a web view if you're working on responsive design, and you can access the code very easily by switching to the code view. I think this is the most revolutionary part of how AI unlock the design capabilities. You know, in the past, if to create a app from scratch, we need to first lay out the wireframe, then develop the hi-fi screens and connect them to create a prototype. So you can demonstrate some concept or idea with the partners and get feedback. And in this case, we just generated a working prototype in a few seconds. Is it perfect? No. But from there, you can just continue to talk to it and iterate with it together, ask for the change adjustment, like how you work with a teammate. I think the overall design thinking, the process of diverge, converge, that still applies, but that linear process of creating ideas, lo-fi, testing wireframe, to generating hi-fi and creating a prototype, that process has significantly changed because now we can quickly generate a working prototype in just a few seconds. Now, without coding, without much context, anybody can use chat tools to create an app or start a business. But on the other hand, does it make it easier to create a successful product? I don't think that has changed much because you still need the experience and knowledge to be able to guide the AI in the right directions to achieve your visionary idea. Another tool that I love is Gamma for deck creation. Let me show you how it works. So we're looking at the homepage of Gamma. You can just generate a deck from a one line prompt or paste in tags if you have more contact or outline that you wanted to share. Here, let me show you an example of how to generate from one line of prompt. Let me click on generate, output to a presentation for now, and 10 card classic default. Let me jump in my prompt, create a pitch deck for AI fitness app that help users track and achieve fitness goals. Let's see what we can get from here. Generate outline. So it is creating the outline of the stack from intro to the market opportunity and the problem space, solution, how fit AI works, competitive edge, with this business model, monetization, validation, and go to market growth strategy at the end. Here, you can make any adjustment or move things around. If you're happy with it, you can just click on generate. There we go. Within a minute, it's generated this beautiful pitch deck with just the one line of prompt. Let's take a quick look. Start with the cover page, Fit AI, your intelligent fitness coach for real results talking about a market opportunity with some real data, touch on the problem space and motivation. Our solution, the AI powered personalized fitness coaching, how it works, competitive edge, what sets fit AI apart, what's the business model and monetization opportunities, 
how do we validate the idea with a beautiful data visualization and a go-to-market growth strategy. You know, I've been using Gamma for a while, but every time I use it, it blows my mind. There are a lot of things that you can adjust from the theme to what kind of charts, diagrams that you wanted to use here. Of course, you can use this tool for storytelling presentation. I think it also serves as a great inspirational tool that can help me get a sense of how the storytelling might look like, what kind of materials, what kind of data visualizations that I can use for different sections to make Make my story more compelling. If you have not tried it, take a look and let me know what you think. The last phase, testing and validation. So for this part of the work, uh, there are different tools you can use from accessibility plugins that can help you audit the design and point out accessibility issues. There are many AI assisted prototyping tools that allows you to run A-B testing. So Figma itself has this contrast checker that can help you check your color contracts to make sure your design meets the WCG accessibility standards. You can use this checker to enter your foreground and background color, and it will immediately give you the result, whether it passed the AA or AAA standard, so you can audit your color palette. Uh, there are also a lot of other plugins that can help you do accessibility audit within the Figma file, so feel free to explore that in the Figma community. That is all we have for today. We have looked at a number of tools, but really from the perspective of how they can help you in the everyday design work. And so my take is AI has not taken away my creativity. I think it actually frees me up for more time so that I can spend on the critical thinking, which leads to my conclusion that I think designers who will thrive in the next few years are probably not the ones who can push pixels faster. I think it will be the ones who can ask really good questions, define sharper strategies, and guide AI to produce the right outcome. You know, honestly, I am still learning. As many of you, there are so many things uh, evolving in the AI space. If this is something interesting to you, feel free to drop me a comment. I would be happy to share more along my journey as I test those different tools and share my point of view of what are things helpful versus not. I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.